A portfolio is a tool that shows the knowledge and skills of a person. Initially, it was used by different professionals, such as designers or photographers. It has since been developed for use in the educational field as a work folder, where students, teachers, schools, etc. can show their work. When the portfolio is online, it's called an e-portfolio. An e-portfolio shows the creator's work in digital form, using different types of multimedia elements, such as video, images, animation, text, etc. This information is stored on a website. In the educational context, the e-portfolio is used to fulfil a series of objects that are fundamental for the teaching and learning process. One of them is to guide the student so that his activity is as effective as possible. In addition, it's very important that the student himself sees his progress. The e-portfolio will allow the student to see his development and progress. The e-portfolio will also allow the student to use that information to get better results. It is essential that the student focuses and understands the process that is carried out to get the final result. Let's look at another objective of the e-portfolio. The e-portfolio as a school work tool is aimed at the individual development of students and is used to reflect on previous learning to create and develop further learning. This tool is very useful to highlight what the student knows about himself, his work during the course, and provides the opportunity to carry out a self-evaluation to help improve performance. The student also learns how to effectively manage the information, locating it, selecting what's relevant, structuring it and analysing it. The e-portfolio should be considered as a space where the activity of the student is recorded. It would therefore be a place where the information is produced, updated and reviewed continuously. It's therefore a reflection of the student's knowledge and is using a new way to teach and learn. The e-portfolio should not be forgotten or abandoned. This tool has different uses in the classroom. The most obvious function is to document the work that the student does in the classroom and out of it. Also, it can be used as a way to critically analyse the assimilation of contents by the student. It also allows the student to value the learning process and get feedback on learning. It makes it easier to carry out a self-evaluation and to reflect on the learning process. All of this information is useful not only for the teacher, but also for the student himself, allowing him to take ownership of his learning. There are different types of e-portfolio depending upon the type of classification used. In education, it's used to evaluate the achievement of objectives and to reflect on learning. It can help to confirm that goals have been achieved. An e-portfolio must be structured properly. A guide or an index must be created that specifies the sections of content that will be in the e-portfolio. Secondly, an introduction is created in which the intentions that are pursued within that portfolio and the point of departure are concretised. Next, the central body of the e-portfolio is displayed, showing the documentation that the student has selected to display. Finally, it includes a closing section that is a synthesis of the student's learning in relation to the contents. The following must be considered in the preparation of an e-portfolio. The author of the e-portfolio and the target audience, the contents to be developed, the objectives that are intended to be achieved and the competences to be developed, the structure and organisation to be followed, and finally the evaluation criteria must be taken into account. An e-portfolio is put together in different stages. The first stage is gathering the evidence. Evidence should be selected depending upon the objectives and the competences that are to be achieved. It can be different kind of information, tasks that have been carried out in the class, information taken in different media. In the second stage, we select the best work of the students to present them to the teacher and the rest of the classmates. In the third stage, we reflect on the work that's been presented to achieve an evaluation and self-evaluation of teaching and learning processes. Finally, 
we need to sort all the information included in the ePortfolio in a creative way and then it's published on the space that was created for it. Mm -hmm.